In a hugely influential article in a 1958 edition of the Harvard Business Review, Robert Tannenbaum and Warren Schmidt set out what they called a continuum of leadership behaviours. And that continuum of behaviours gives us seven options along a continuum from a highly directive to a highly supportive style of leadership that you can take with your team. So in this video, I want to outline Tannenbaum and Schmidt's leadership continuum as it applies to team leadership. Tannenbaum and Schmidt considered the example of a team considering a problem that it needs to resolve and looked at seven different ways in which you as a team leader can handle that situation to illustrate the kind of range of options you have available to you. And they also pointed out that the choices you make have to depend on a number of things. They have to depend upon you, who you are and, and the way you think about the situation. They clearly depend upon the situation itself. And in addition, they depend upon the team and your assessment of the team. And they gave these seven examples, which I'll share with you now. The first is the most authoritarian style of leadership. The leader makes a decision about how to solve the problem and announces it to the team and requires them to enact their solution. In the second level, the manager still makes their decision and still expects them to comply with it, but they take a bit of time to sell the solution to the team. Here, as a team leader, you care that your team agree that it is an appropriate solution, though you don't require them to believe that it is the right solution. At the next level, as a leader, you will present a solution to your team, but invite questions and be prepared to review your decision before requiring them to enact it. In the middle of our range, at the fourth level, now you as a leader are not only prepared to answer questions about your decision and possibly review it, you are now committed to changing your decision should the team find flaws in it and suggest better ways. Now you are really engaging your team, having made your tentative first decision in polishing it up and getting it right. Having consulted your team on your decision in the fourth stage, in the fifth stage, you consult your team to get suggestions before you make a decision. Now, some of the responsibility for problem solving falls upon your team and you are open to their influence. And at the sixth level, you make it possible for the team to make its own decisions. You set constraints, you set rules, you set boundaries, you may even facilitate the process, but you allow the team to find its own solution and to make its own decision. You may or may not choose to retain a veto over it, although almost certainly you would, because it is only at the seventh level that the team leader delegates all responsibility for resolving a problem and forming a decision and deciding how to act to their team. And the only constraints that you apply at this seventh level are those that are fundamental to the organization over which you have no control. Now the team is in charge, not you. Your leadership style is purely facilitative. Choosing which style to use is partly down to you, what Tannenbaum and Schmidt called the forces in the leader or the manager. Your values, your confidence in yourself and your confidence in the team and the situation. They're about the way you like to manage and lead and about how secure you feel in your own position. You also need to think about the forces in your team, your team members, their styles, their preferences, their need for independence, their confidence in problem solving, their confidence in doing the task that you have set them. 
How much knowledge do they have? How much experience do they have? What are their expectations? And how much trust do they have in themselves and in you? And finally, there's the forces in the situation. What is the problem? What is the challenge? What is the task that you're setting your team? And how important is it? And what are the consequences of failure? What is the culture of the organization within which the task sits? And the priorities and the time pressure? You might also like to think about the track record of your team and yourself and your experience in solving problems like this and tackling tasks of this kind. When you've thought through yourself, your organization, your team, then you select the right level of delegation of the problem of the task to your team. As a team leader, you can either delegate it all to them or nothing. But you can also delegate along that spectrum, along Tannenbaum and Schmidt's leadership continuum. Please do give us a thumbs up if you've liked this video. There's loads more great management courses content to come, so please do subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of it. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And in the meantime, keep learning.